So, do you remember when I asked you for trickster tales? And Jennifer Carter stood up and said, I know one with a girl. I was thrilled. Very thrilled. Never heard of Molly Whoopi from England. That didn't stop me from looking her up. Molly's family was very large, but they were also very poor. When winter came, her parents made a very difficult decision. They took the three youngest girls, including Molly, out into the woods and left them to fend for themselves. Luckily, they had taught Molly what it was to dig up roots to eat, or how to catch small animals, or which berries were not poisonous. And she was the one that kept the girl's spirits high, at least for a few days. There's only so many berries and nuts and fruits a girl can eat before being really, really hungry. And that was when they saw the biggest cottage they had ever seen right in the middle of the forest. Molly walked up to the door. The knocker was above her head, but she took it and swung it as hard as she could. And the door swung open. There was the biggest woman they had ever seen. Oh, no, girls, no, no, get out of here now. My husband will be back soon. And if they find you, he'll kill you. He'll eat you. He's a giant, you know. Oh, Mom, please, please, we just need some sandwiches. If you could just throw us a little cheese and we'll be on our way. No, girls, you've got to go now. He's coming very soon. I can hear his footsteps. Mom, we haven't really eaten in about three days. If you could please just give us a little bit of cheese or bread. Well, the giantess's heart was soft. And she let the three girls inside and she fed them soup and meat and bread. They were so full that their stomachs almost rose up into their mouths when they heard the front door open. Boom! And the giant man walked in. Fee, fi, fo, fum. Oh, I got me some supper. And he looked at the three girls. His wife ran out in front of them. You're not touching these girls. Not in front of me. What could he do? He sat down at the table, took his stew, and his bread and his meat began to eat. Well, I tell you, this is the strangest family no matter anybody has eaten at. Whether it be the giant, or the giant's wife, or the three girls, or their three daughters. I didn't tell you that the giant had three daughters. Yeah, three girls, about the age of Molly and her sisters. And it got stranger. Because after dinner, the giant informed Molly and her sisters that they were going to stay the night. They didn't really have much choice. And then it got even more odd because then the giant gave them presents to his daughters. He gave beautiful gold necklaces. Each one clasped them on with pride. To Molly and, his, Molly and her sisters, he gave rope necklaces just tied right on. Well, the six girls were to share the same room, climbed into a great big bed, all snuggled in together. It was nice and warm, but Molly was worried. So she stayed up while everybody else slowly, one by one, went to sleep. She suspected that the giant was going to do them harm. So she crawled out of bed and she unclasped all of the gold necklaces and she untied all of the rope necklaces and switched them so now the giant's daughters were wearing the rope necklaces and molly and her sisters were wearing the gold ones as soon as molly got tucked underneath the covers again she heard the of the bedroom door and the giant was trying to be as quiet as possible he came over to the bed and put out his giant fingers and began to feel along the bed. 
along the pillows, just that line where your neck is. Every time he felt a rope necklace around a girl's neck, he brought out a great big hammer and boom! Knocked her on the head. Three times that happened. And Molly held three breaths. The giant left. And Molly looked at his daughters, all dead as doornails. Then Molly looked at her sisters and woke them up quickly because she knew they could not stay till the morning. They jumped out the window with those gold necklaces and ran for their lives. Well, on the other edge of the forest was the king's house. And when they came in and Molly told the entire story, the king, well, he was quite impressed. Well, Molly, that is very impressive, ma'am. You know, I've been thinking about that giant. I think you could do me a favor. Molly listened, why not? The king explained that the giant had a big bag of gold that he kept underneath his pillow. And if Molly could get that gold for him, well, the king would give Molly's oldest sister his oldest son. He had observed that Molly's sister and his son could be making eyes at each other a little bit, flirting a little bit. And Molly knew that to marry her sister to the king's son, that would mean she would be taken care of. Molly agreed to the job. And so she went back into the forest, into the middle of the dark, dark wood, back to the giant's house. She crept inside his bedroom and hid behind his door. When he came in, he slugged in like normal, ate his supper up, crawled into his bed and <sighs> began to snore away. Molly crept out from behind the door, up to the bed, and slid her hand underneath the giant's pillow. She could feel the bag of gold, she, but she had to slide another hand in to bring it out. She got all the way out, crept all across the floor, through the door, and almost all across the yard when she heard a, Where is she? And he just started running after her. And Molly looked back, and yes, indeed, that was the giant. And she began running and running and running until she got to the bridge of one hair. She made it across. He was too big. He couldn't get across. But he could yell from the other side, Molly, you better not come back here. Well, she was feeling a bit cocky. So she stood on the other side and she stuck her hip out and she said, Well, I might. She went back to the king, gave him the bag of gold, and he was quite pleased. So pleased that the next day he said, Now, Molly, I'm very impressed with you, girl. I think that it would be great if you did me another favor. And he explained that the giant had a sword above his bed had beautiful jewels in the hilt. If the king had that for his collection, well, he would marry Molly's other sister to his middle son. He had noticed they'd been flirting and making eyes at each other a little bit. And he thought that might be a good deal. And Molly knew that if she married her sister to the king's son, she'd be taken care of. So she agreed and went back into the forest, back into the deep wood, into the middle where that big giant house was. She snuck in again, went behind the giant's bedroom door and waited. That night, the giant came in, slogged up all of his supper and went straight to his bed, started <laughs> snoring immediately. Molly crept out from behind the bedroom door right up to the bed. She crawled up on the bed and reached both hands above her head. And, oh, mm, that sword was a bit hard to get down, but she did it. And she got all the way across the floor and almost to the door when the giant woke up. Oh, where is she? And he started running towards her and she got through the door and across the yard and all the way to the bridge of one hair. She got across. He couldn't get across, he was too big. But he could yell. Hi there, Molly! You better not come back here! She was feeling a bit cocky, so she stuck out her other hip 
And she said, well, I might. And she went back to the king's house. The king was quite impressed. So impressed that the next day he came to her and he said, I'm there, Molly. My girl. I'm telling you, if I just had that ring from the giant's hand, I promise you something real sweet. He proceeded to tell her that he would give his youngest son to her if he could have the giant's ring. Yeah. I'm going to tell you, going back to the giant's house did not sound like a picnic in the park. But the king's son was really a pretty boy. And he had a great sense of humor. And, oh, so many things. He read so many books. And he made her laugh. Oh. And he was kind and he listened. And Molly knew that if she married the king's son, they'd both be taken care of. So she went back in the woods, back to that giant cottage in the middle of the dark, dark wood. And she slipped herself inside, back behind the bedroom. That night, the giant came home. He slugged down all of his supper and got into his bed and <sighs> began to snore. Molly snuck out very quietly across the floor. His hand was conveniently laying across the bed, almost dangling, almost tempting Molly to take his ring. So Molly snuck up and gently took the giant's hand in her own. Took two hands to hold it, honestly. But she started sliding the ring off his fingers slowly. And when she got it off, she was about to turn. But that's when she realized the giant was looking straight at her. He reached out his other hand and grabbed her shirt. Oh, Molly, I've got you now. <gasps> now you think you're so clever. If you're so clever, you tell me what to do with you. How am I going to get rid of Molly Whoopi? Well, if I was you and you were me, um, and you wanted to get rid of me, I put me in a sack with a cat and a dog and um, find the biggest stick I could find and then beat it. I swear I'd do. Well, Molly, you've got some good ideas. And that's what he did. He lifted Molly up by her shirt and he took her into the kitchen where he found a big sack. He threw her inside of it. And then he found a cat, threw it inside. He found a dog, threw it inside. And he didn't have a big stick. So he tied up the sack really well and he hung it on a hook in the kitchen. Went outside to go find him the biggest stick he could find. Well, meanwhile, the giant's wife came in. And she saw this strange sack hanging on the uh, hook in her kitchen. Well, her husband had done stranger things, so she just left it alone and started going about her business. And then Molly began to speak inside the sack. Oh, if you could just see what I see. Is that you, Molly? Are you in that sack? What, what can you see in a sack? Molly didn't say anything except for in a few minutes, when she said, Oh, if you could just say what I say. Well, now the giant's wife was quite curious. I mean, really, what could Molly see inside of a sack? And she begged Molly to tell her. But Molly wouldn't speak, except for just to say that one thing every few minutes. And finally, finally, Molly explained that it was a beautiful 
lightness, and one had to experience it for oneself, and if the giant's wife would like to get in the sack, well, she could come in for a few minutes. But he, Molly, she would have to let Molly back in, you see, because there was perfection inside the sack, and nobody else would want to leave, and it was out of the kindness of Molly's heart that she would let the giant's wife see. She agreed. So the giant's wife took the sack down, and she got Molly out of the sack and crawled in herself. Well, Molly tied that up real tight, took both arms to lift it, and put it back on the hook. Whew. And then she ran, ran and ran, out the door, out the yard, toward the bridge. And at that time, the giant was coming back in with the biggest stick he had found. He began to beat that bag that was against the wall and hanging on the hook. And the giant's wife began to scream, No, husband, no, it's me, let me out! They couldn't hear her. There was a dog and a cat equally complaining inside the sack. And that was when the giant turned around and saw Molly running across his yard. He began to run after her. He began to run as hard as he possibly could, except for Molly got to the bridge of one hair. She made it across. He couldn't make it across. He was too big. But he could yell. Molly! Molly! You better not come back here! Molly put both hands on her hips, and she said, Well, I'm not! And she went to the king's house and found her husband. And I tell you, they lived happily ever after.